Hello everyone and happy new year. I wish you had a great holidays with your friends and family. I was on vacation too and that's why it took so long from previous session. In this tutorial, we'll talk about a very important subject which is HTTP request which includes GET and POST request. You send some requests to uh, the website or server and you receive some data. So I divided into different um, parts uh, because it's very important and I want to uh, make sure that you understand every single details. So the first part, I just talk about an SQL connection, an SQL connection data delegate, and all of the data delegates that relates to this class. So let's move on. Okay, here's the final product of our application after we finish talking about NSURL connection. Uh, you will not see and learn it by the end of this tutorial, but we will finish it in more than two, maybe three tutorials. Because it's very important, I will take the time, and I want to make sure that you understand each and every detail. So this is very simple. It just shows the title of the news and the category of this news. It is fetching data from Garden News. This is the URL for this. And it uses the test API. Since it was the easiest way to fetch the data, I used this website. And once you send a request to this URL, it gives back this um, as a response. It's the JSON response. So that's all for uh, the result of our tutorials. So let's move on. Okay, let's create a new project, create a new Xcode project, and let's call it fetch news. Hit next, and we call it save it here. And I want to cheat here. I want to use two classes that I uh, previously created, but don't worry, I will explain single line by line for you and make sure you understand it. Okay. Let's go to the rest api.m and see what's going on around here. Let me make it full screen. Okay, the first line is just imported the rest api.h which we have here and we copied just copied here. The next line shows the name of the class which I chose to have rest api as a class name and then it shows the delegate method that I want to implement, which is NSURL connection data delegate. It has some useful method that we can do requests for HTTP. So let's go inside of this delegate method and see what are the useful methods. If you hold the command key and press on this, you will see all of the available uh, useful methods that we have on this uh, delegate method. So the ones that we use is did receive data, did receive response and we can see it here if I go back to our REST API class you see I implemented did receive data did receive response and connection did finish loading and connection did fail with error so from here I can say and uh, delegate method delegate methods I just added this request and two setters, nothing special, just two setters, which I, if I open it, you can see it's just a setter that we um, know at its laziest instantiation. Uh, it just instantiate the instance as soon as we need it. It's nothing special. Same thing for here. This is for connection. And we request, the request, I will talk about the request, but all you have to know about this class is just implementing the delegate methods for NSURL connection data delegate. Okay, let's start with the first delegate method, which is did receive data. If I open it, it's just one line of code that uses receive data property. What is receive data property? If you can look at here, it's just the type of NS mutable data. It, this type is just a data that can computer read it and then we have to convert it to some human readable stuff. So for right now it's just a data. Why do we use it here? We append this data here. Why do we append it? Okay, when sometimes when we request something, the amount of data that we receive as a response is very big. And 
computer divided into separate parcels and then they receive the data and send the response. So if we want the response as a whole, we have to append it every time we receive the data. For example, when we send a request, it divided into three parcels and send it one by one. So the first time this method will call, it received one third of the data. Then the second time, it two third, and the third time, the whole part. So we have to append this data together as a whole. Otherwise, it would be corrupted. It cannot be read uh, at the end. So we have to append this data. So the whole thing that this method is doing is just appending the received data. Okay, let's skip this delegate method. We'll come back to it in a minute. The next delegate method is did fail with error. So sometimes when we request something over internet, HTTP, uh, it will fail for whatever reason. So if it fails, it's maybe our fault, it's maybe because we did a bad request. Whatever it is, it will go here and did fail with error. So what do we do here? For this tutorial, for the sake of simplicity, I didn't do anything special if I receive error. I just log it to the console to see what I receive and what is the message error that I receive. But for your future projects, you may have to do handle it and see um, at least show it to the user. But for now, we just don't do anything inside of it other than log it log this error message and see what is the error description. I just used error dot description and it shows the error description that we receive here. Okay, let's go back to this delegate method which is connection did finish loading. This is the time that we can say, okay, we receive all of the data that we have to. And what we did here, let me start from the bottom. I have a delegate, I have request connection, and I have received data. You see request connection and receive data here. These are two properties that are uh, private, which is private means in in .m file, whatever is in .h file, which is, is public, but these two properties are uh, private. So I put nil because we want to have more than one request maybe in our application. So every time I put these delegate, this request connection and receive data equal to nil after I'm done with it. So I would be sure that all of these properties goes to nil and they will go to reinitialize when we need it, which is their setters. If you see here, you have two setters here the, for receive data and for request connection. Okay, let's talk about this line of code. It says self.delegate and then some method here that we have not seen here. So what is it coming from? As I mentioned, we want to use this REST API class in other classes when we want to send the request. So since we want to use it in other class, we should have a delegate method for using these properties. So that's why I define a delegate properties and a protocol inside of REST API.h file. If you open REST API.h, you will see these four lines of code. This is how we create a protocol and delegate method. If you don't know how to create the delegate method, watch tutorial number 18. It will completely show how to create the delegate method and protocol. So I define this delegate method, this protocol, in order to use it in other classes. So what it does is just gets the data. What is the data? Let's go back to that M file. The data that we have here is the received data, the one that we append to each other every time that we want. So, which is here. See, this is the received data. This is this property. So, we pass this argument to this file in order to read it in our own file. So, the only thing that we need from this REST API. Uh, class is the data that we receive from the server. So we send this data to whatever class that wants to implement this delegate method. So 
here we define this delegate uh, uh, delegate methods and the delegate name and then we define the delegate as I said you can watch the uh, tutorial number 18 that you, it will explain how to create the delegate method and once you have this delegate you'll come here and you see this delegate method we put it to nil as I said this is the public API but by calling this delegate method once we finish loading we will notify that class that this data is received and we can do whatever with the response that's all for the delegate methods that we should know so if I go back to that edge file there's nothing special here as you can see these are just for defining the delegate method this is the pro property we have two um, file and I just want to use the post and get we can we, we, it's not that necessary to use um, these post and get as a uh, constant variable uh, but I just use it uh, if you want to use it you can use it the other thing that we have here is the public method for REST API for example when we want to request something we have to have a public API in REST API so that's why I put this method inside of that edge file so other class that can see this method and implement it so the difference you may say okay uh, what is the difference between this delegate and this public method by this public method we send a request to the server or whatever website that we want and this delegate method <coughs> notifies us once we receive the response so there's a difference between this method by this method we just request and this delegate method is just sends us and notify us that we receive some data and it gives us the data so let's go back to that M file if I open the request now this is the file that we have not opened it yet it shows that it used self that request connection which we have a property for it this request connection and it use it request how do we request this is the method that we request for NS URL connection it says NS URL connection connection with request what is our request this is the request that we sent from our custom class which we receive from here this method see uh, inside of here our public method has an argument called request so when we call this method we should send our request so what is our what we what would we do with this request we put it in this method connection with request and our delegate is self because all we implement all of the NSUR connection delegate methods so the only thing that this, me this method is doing it just send the request and once we receive the data it will call this once it finish the data it will call this method and if it fails it will call this method so now you have some idea what's going on inside of the rest api .h file okay let's rest for a while and talk about more fun part of this application if you click on the storyboard this application needs some ui so let's talk about a little ui and uh, we need the table view controller so from the palette i want to choose a table view controller and drag it to the screen actually storyboard and since we don't need this one we can just use the initializer if you put this arrow at the this table view you can just delete this by selecting it and pressing delete button on the keyboard and now you can we can specify the size for this view which we want to define iPhone 6 view and if we go to the inspector and uh, attribute inspector and select the size we put 4.7 which is iPhone 6 and now we have a proper size 
Then you select a row, which is the row of this table, and then in Attribute Inspector, you choose uh, the style. For here, we want subtitle, and you should immediately see title and subtitle for this. And the identifier is important. Remember whatever name you want to put. Just remember for the next tutorial. And um, nothing special here to change, but we have to create a, a file in order to uh, implement our table view. So Control and Command N to have a new file, Coco Touch class, and we call it um, News News, just News. News TVC table view controller and subclass of UI table view controller and next create so now we have two files new tvc .h and new tvc .m. let's add this and dedicate this uh, controller to this class we select this uh, here and we define the class new tvc we know how to do so now this class is connected to these .h and .m file. That's it for this tutorial. Stay tuned. I will uh, update uh, the next tutorial soon and show you how we can request for fetching the news. Have a good day.